What's happening, buddy? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. I've got a form right here, and if I fill it out, I'll just go Hayden Adams, that's me, and we'll say john at johnsmith.com. If I simply fill this form out, when I send it, I get a cool, hey, it works, thanks. And I'm using Netlify Forms. So what Netlify Forms does is if I pull open my forms plan, if I just refresh the page, it's going, hey, last contact received, at 9.52 a.m., which is just about a few seconds ago. If I click on this, I've got one right here, and Hayden Adams and John at johnsmith.com. I'm gonna connect my basic website, Hello World, using a little bootstrap form to Netlify Forms, one of the best tools to use if you're using Net, Netlif, I was gonna say Netflix, if you're using Netlify already. And we're starting right now. All right, so I've got a basic bootstrap contact form right here with your name and email. If you wanna know how to set up a contact form using bootstrap, I'll put the link in the description below of how I built a basic contact form. For this one, I just stripped it down to just my name or your name and email. And if we come down the HTML, we've got a basic form in place. So I've got a form tag to open and close the form. And using bootstrap, I've got a row. So I've got basic the form group where eventually it's gonna to go to different columns as it gets bigger or smaller. But for right now, we're just keeping it where it is. And in here, I have your name and email address. So basically, I'm just collecting two things, my name and my email. To get this form actually working with Netlify, we have to do a couple things. The first thing we wanna do is adjust the form tag. So in the form, we have to add a couple things. I'm gonna hit the return key just for readability. You don't have to do it on home, or you can do it at home if you want to. I'm gonna say name equals contact. This is the name of the form. So if I had multiple forms, I could have multiple names of multiple forms. I have to create a method because it's either a get or a post. If you use Google, that's a get because you're getting information from a form. In this case, I'm posting information, so I wanna use post. After that, I wanna do a couple more things. I'm gonna say data Netlify, which is the real key to this whole puzzle, and say true. This is gonna activify, activify, that's a good word, activate this form when you're actually putting it on the server of Netlify. So after that, we have to do one more for right now. I'm gonna say on submit. This just helps my actual button kick into gear and I'll say submit. Perfect, now I have this form in place right here. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna give these fields names. And this is the crucial part because it's gonna show up inside of Netlify's form information. Down below in the input for text, if you've got a select or a text area, it'll be the same thing. Right here, I'm gonna say name equals name because this is gonna be you know, my, your name. The next one I wanna do is down below where it says email and at the very end, I'm gonna say name, ooh, that one's good. How about we say actually name equals email. This is the two piece that'll catch it, and also this will put the email address in the reply to when we go and set up the actual form to email us the response. Now that I have all these in place, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save my file. I'm gonna head over to Netlify. Let me find that one document that I had. Apparently I closed Netlify, so let's come back over and open it back up. Netlify.com. Let's log in, and since this is a basic static website, I'm gonna go to Sites, and at the very bottom of the page, I'm gonna drop this page in, because this is just HTML and CSS. So let me grab my folder over here. I have my Netlify forms, bootstrap start, and I'll drag the file, or rather the folder, all the way in. It'll upload it, it's gonna create its own unique URL, and with any success, if I go to forms, check it out. The active forms have already been caught, and it says contact because I named it contact. Let's actually try this and see if it works. I'm gonna head to this URL, and I will say, let's go John Smith for our name. Why not, let's mix things up a little bit and john at johnsmithdesigns.com. And we'll click on send. Cool, thank you. Your form submission has been received. Now has it? Really? Let's take a look. 
we go back to our form. I'm going to head back to Netlify. And if we come back to our forms within Netlify, now contact last submission 10.04 a.m. a few seconds ago. We can see that John Smith, we submitted a form. Perfect. Your name, John Smith. Email john at johnsmithdesigns.com. Awesome. It's working, but we can make this work a lot better. Notice this little prevent spam here. All form submissions are filtered for spam using a kismet. Additional protection, you can add a honeypot field or an explicit recaptcha to challenge. Those caption, those captcha challenges really drive me crazy. So I want to build a honeypot and make this extra secure of a form for my end user to use as easy as possible. Let's just hide Netlify for one second and I'm going to come back to my HTML tag information. And what I want to do now is I want to add an actual honeypot. So inside this form name information, hit the return key so we can see it on a separate line. I'm going to type data, Netlify, and then honeypot. Now we have to give this an actual name. So I'm going to say pot field. Now with the honeypot, how the field works is I don't want to show it to the end user. Me and you, the public can't see this, but different scraping tools looking for forms can. And if anyone fills this form out, it goes directly to spam, not collecting $200, going right to the spam filter. So what I'm going to do is down below, right where it says div right here, right above it, I'm going to create an input and say name. And we'll say the name is going to be bot field. Now from here, there we go. I'm going to save it. If I refresh the page, that field would show up, but I don't want it to show up. So we're going to use the power of bootstrap. And I just said, yep, there it is. I was looking at class down below. Input, we're going to say is class and then equal D none. That's going to stand for display none within bootstrap. When I save that, now what happens is that field goes away and it's now connected to the honeypot bot field. Let's save this, make sure it's all set to go. And now what I want to do is I'm going to re-upload this folder. I'm going to come back to the start folder right here and bring open my Netlify window. Here we go. And the great part of Netlify is I just have to drag and drop my HTML. It's pretty rad that way. So I can come right to production deploys from site overview. And here what I'm going to do is just need to update your site. Just drag and drop your folder. Cool. Let's do it. That is easy. Perfect. Now the cool, or I shouldn't say the uncool part is that it doesn't change this uploading. Kind of gets stuck. So I refresh the page. It's going to be fine. Yep. We're all good. Now when I go into forms and if I click on contact, that little spam box is gone and extra spam prevention enabled via the honeypot field. Cool. Let's try and see if we submit this information again to get it working. I'm going to do is not go there. Let's go out of this, come back, overview, click on netlify.app just to make sure we got the right version so it's got the most recent updated one. And let's say Abe Lincoln. And it's going to be Abe at Abe's website design. He designs multiple websites. We'll say Abe's websites designs, all plural for the fun of it. And we're going to say send. Cool. Thank you for your submission. If we come back to our contact form, let's head up to forms and contact. Now we have Abe Lincoln. This is working pretty darn good. But to me, this thank you screen is good, but I want to create my own custom success page whereby when someone actually fills out the send page, they get notified looking like my website that the form has been submitted successfully. So here's how to do it a lot of times. I'm going to close Netlify again for one second. We'll bring them back. But what I want to do is inside my index.html, I want to set up a success message whereby when someone fills out the form, they get a specific page. So inside this form tag again, what I'm going to do is say action equals slash success. And then don't forget to close the success as well. So what I want to do with this one is I'm going to create a success page. So under index.html, if I go to my actual folder, 
what I do a lot of times is since this is the form I want to show, I'm going to duplicate this and say success HTML. Now in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the form. So it looks exactly the same page, but the form is going to be gone. And we'll go here, take it out, and let's say paragraph tag. Thank you. Your submission has been received. Perfect. Let's save this. And now let's test it again to see if it works. And we can see the success page by just dragging our success page. Looks like that. Thank you. Your submission has been received. Perfect. So let's drag and drop our file. What we're going to do is come back. I'm going to bring up Netlify and out of the forms into setup review and production deploys. From here, we'll drag our start folder. There we go. Upload will not change. So I have to kind of manually refresh that. That's the one issue I have. Come on, Netlify. If you're watching this, let's get that thing fixed. Perfect. So now what I want to do is let's test this to make sure it works. Awesome. Your name. Let's go George Washington since we're into the world of U.S. presidents. George at George Washington wins.com. Sure. Making random email addresses up as I go along. Perfect. Now what we get is we get hello world and a thank you. Your submission has been received. So no longer does it do that black and white de facto Netlify design, but it gives us our own design. And if we come back to our form, click on it, we should get, we've got John Smith, Abe Lincoln, and now we have George Washington and George at georgewashingtonwins.com. Awesome. But the last step in all this, because this is all working great, but ultimately I don't go to Netlify every single time to see if someone submitted a request. I like to get emailed so I can then check it on the fly. So how we do that is inside of forms and site overview, what I want to do is go to site settings. And it's a little confusing at first, but there's a forms up here and there's a forms down here. The forms in this long list control what, how, and what, and how the form works. You also get 100 form submissions. This will eventually change tomorrow. Probably I've already gotten three in this so far this month. So just so you know, you do get a hundred for free, but you can of course raise it to unlimited with a higher tier package down below where it says form notifications. I can add a notification and what I can do is I can type my new form submission right here and it'll email and notify me. And that's how I can really get notified when someone does it. Let me do this to try off screen and I'll see if it works. All right. For the sake of hiding my email address as best as possible, I did it off screen. So I'm going to test this and see if I can submit an email successfully. I'm going to come back to this information and let's do Thomas. Jefferson this time and Thomas Jefferson at third president dot com. No idea if that's even a real website or not, but let's just send it and see what happens. Perfect. This does work so far. And if I do check my email, what should happen is pull it open, check it out. This domain name, which I have so far, this sad bassy, that's a name for a domain name. Basically your name, Thomas Jefferson and email address came there. And what also happens is the reply to also shows up. So I can reply to this email and it can send back to the end user. So if there really was a Thomas Jefferson, well, there was a Thomas Jefferson, but if this real person at Thomas Jefferson at third I could email them back. Netlify makes it so easy to create forms and make them functional. If you want more help using Bootstrap or creating forms, I've got a few other videos right here you can welcome to look at. And always, you're welcome to subscribe to the channel if you found this information helpful. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes.